dialogue impromptu de ce jour, jeudi. Nous sommes jeudi, il est 19h sur ma time zone, mais il est une autre heure dans une autre time zone. Et ce soir, je dialogue avec Angel, my friend. In English, we're going to speak in English, or maybe we're going to speak in French. We're going to improvise a dialogue about freedom. On va parler de la liberté. Alors, je regarde si Angel is with me somewhere. I'm going to invite him to come and join me on the screen. I you. I sent you a little invitation, Angel. It's your time to knock on my door and you will see me immediately and you will share the screen with me. <laughs> the Sanctionary New York, it's you. Do you see me? Welcome on this dialogue. Ah, welcome. Here I am. Welcome. That works perfectly. <laughs> Very smoothly. I knew it. I knew. Yes, we did How it. How are you, Angel? I'm really good. I'm very happy to be with you. I feel we haven't connected in a long time, aside from five minutes ago to prepare this call, but I'm very happy to be here. Yeah, and we had a very fun conversation, which uh, lighted my heart up. <laughs> oh, very nice. I'm so happy. I'm so happy too. And, and, and I really like the, the, the subject we chose together, or you chose, and we said, okay, we're going to talk about freedom. What we must know is that a few days before I talked, a few days or weeks, I forgot, I talked about freedom with a wom uh, w woman. And during this festival that I improvise, I like to invent some connection with women and men to see what we have in common, what we can share and how we can see each other and see how we can go very far away from each other in some conversation or sometimes very closely. So the whole thing is just to show the diversity of our hearts. And freedom, obviously, it's a human thing. <laughs> it's a world thing. So uh, I wanted to invite you and share your heart, my heart and your heart with, with you and see where we're going to go in this improvisation. I'm excited. I love this subject. We can talk for ah. days about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. We could definitely talk for days. And the thing is that we only have um, only. It's good. We have 45 minutes in, in front of us. So it's quite good for an improv. Uh, but obviously, we could do like a, a festival, a few days festival about it. So, Angel, what are we going to share now? What comes to your mind? I mean, we just, it's an intuitive dialogue. So we just see ideas and sensations popping up in our minds. Right now, why talking about freedom now? Well, you know, when we discuss that theme and uh, potentially talking about it, um, You know, the first thing that came to my mind is um, very often it's a question of, of perspective. And when I say that, I mean, um, am I privileged or am I not privileged? And when we talk about freedom or the lack of freedom or the restriction of freedom, it's very different for me to speak about it that if I were a person of color if I was a uh, Native American, if I was oppressed and in a jail right now because of my political views or sexual preferences or things like that. And I think once, as a privileged person, it's hard to talk about it because I might talk about where I feel my freedom is restricted, but what is it in the scale of people that are really experiencing lack of freedom? And obviously, you know, the pandemic and what happened, you know, brought all of the scene. People feel like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm being forced to wear a mask, for example, or I'm being forced to stay in my home and quarantine. And um, very often when I sit with it, it's like, oh, my God, how privileged you are that this is the only restriction of freedom that you're experiencing. And how incredible that it makes you so angry and vocal about it. Um, And not that, you know, obviously we can't compare, you know, really freedom also in the absolute. It's like comparing broken hearts, you know, oh, you're, you're broken out, I'm broken hearted, you know, which one is suffering the most, you know, at the end of the day, it's your experience. So I, I, honor, I want to honor that. I want to honor, you know, what you're feeling. But I think for me, because of, you know, the work we do here and the people I talk and I'm in contact with, I witness that lack of freedom in so many people that is on a whole different scale than 
my maybe lack of freedom. And maybe also, I just want to put that also in the introduction, maybe what I considered my, when I consider myself to be free before maybe being forced to put a mask or being in a pandemic or things like that, was I already free? Was I already free? You know, I'm in a system, I'm part of a country, I'm part of a society, I'm part of a political system, I'm part of a family lineage, I'm part of my ancestry, you know. So it's a difficult thing because of that. And that's why I think, you know, we could go so many ways here, but I just wanted to put it there because I want to acknowledge people there, like whatever I'm going to say that I don't forget that there's people that are truly uh, don't experience it in a way that really is highly limited for their life. Yeah, I really, I really like the way you put it to, to start with this idea of uh, the perspective. And when I listen to you and this per perspective aspect, first, it's really to say it in another way. It's like, what is your reference of freedom, of being free? What, what is the bottom line? And with an image, I would say, in which kind of cage are you? Is the cage like this, like this, like this for you? For me, maybe I feel in a cage like that, but the same cage for another person would be actually bigger because, uh, or, or, or even shorter, you know, it's, it's um, and for me, for, when I listen to you, I would say it in another way that it's all about what's the, the starting point. And as you said, the condition and when, what's the first state from which you one day say, I don't feel free anymore, or, you know, and... Uh, yes, and you, I mean, obviously, you know, I know you come from different culture, cross-culture, you know, and you have different blood in your veins, and you're a woman, you know, so your experience is going to be very different than, than me, you know, as a white male. And, uh, you know, so even us trying to have a conversation, we are coming with this different size, you know, with this different size of our own gels, you know, and all of that. But at the end of the day, also, I think what's limiting me more, you know, the, the, my lack of freedom is more what's in my path, what's blocking me from experiencing joy, from experiencing love. You know, that's where we can go, you know, but we should never forget also the reality of this incarnation, this 3D life that we are living in, which is where maybe we can see it more obviously and we can scream and, and be angry about it. But in truth, really, very often, uh, aside from that, you have the keys to your own jail, you know, and sometimes they are hard to find, you know, what's going to liberate you, what's going to bring you into really true liberation and what we call freedom here. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, you know, the fact that we are in this pandemic, all of us, and we, when we compare countries, and yeah, for me, I'm from France and from Madagascar, and I compare how they deal with it, how they pass the obstacles and everything just from these two different uh, countries but obviously if you compare all of them all of the world it's so for me it's it's very confusing to see how we deal with this sensation of being in prison in lockdown or being free or breaking the cage uh, and how politically they do it and how as a society we do it and all this um it's very um uh there is no equality there I think, and this is also why it's confusing and the definition of a freedom is so difficult because what I would call being free is maybe for you, oh, you're definitely alienated in your own <laughs> way. You know, Some people from Africa, and I know that, would say, some country that I know would say that they feel when they see me leaving, obviously I have maybe more money, but they, f they feel I'm totally alienated by some conditions that for me I don't see as <laughs> alienation. Um, yeah. And very often when I think for myself, when did I felt maybe free or what was that first experience of it? Looking back, it's probably my childhood, you know, as a little child, because when we look at child, they are very free. They are playful. They are not burdened yet by the turmoil of the world. They haven't been maybe yet, you know, traumatized by some events that happened in their life. So there is that freedom in the child, you know, that is, that is beautiful. But if I was a black child or if I was a non-binary child that maybe is born in a male body but identified as a woman, uh, vice versa, 
maybe in my experience, even as a child, would already be restricted freedom because I would not be safe to walk in the street. I might not be safe at school. I might not even be safe in my own home with my own parents to be who I am and to express that. So my experience of freedom might have been, been restricted very early, you know, before I even come out by the definition of society of who I should be. And very often, I think that's where we, we struggle with this idea of freedom. It's like looking at really that. And that's usually what calls people into transformation and healing. You know, it's this exploration of a part of me that feels trapped, that doesn't feel free. What is that part in me that feels, you know, jailed? Can I free that? Am I safe to do it? Oh, I'm going to do it. Where am I going to do it? Is my community going to allow me to do it? So, exactly. you know, there's so much there also when we think of it. Oh, yeah, definitely. We, we sometimes feel in front of a wall, a big wall, because where is the key? What is even the key to even unlock something that's uh, so huge? Because as you say, when you, you, you tell me about the kid, first, when you spoke about the kid, I said, oh, my God, that's the key. That would be a definition. To be free is to find, to, to, find, to meet with this kid again, the, the inner child. But it's not that simple because right after that, you said that it depends which child because there are some children that are really trapped in some conditions, some society, some cultural, sexual aspects. So it's not that, oh, yeah, look for your inner child. Come on. It's not that simple. The, the recipe is not so simple. So it's yeah. so subtle. The very subtlety about this, this freedom is very subtle. And when I listen to you, I also have the, the image of scale. It's all about scale. A quelle échelle, huh? Scale, c'est ça? Scale. Yes, yeah, scale, Which yeah. Are we yeah. about this freedom, inner freedom, outside freedom? It's not like we, we can be not in the lockdown, not in the pandemic, but we were locked down inside, like inner, inner limited uh, beliefs, uh, like obstac inner obstacles. So for me, how do you deal with the inner obstacles and the out uh, outdoor or outside obstacles? When they added to each other, we had. How can we do that? It's it's double. Uh, yeah, that's a good. Being you know, like a, um, a card game, you know, it's a bit like a card game. So you're given cards when you're born, a game, and we're all given different cards, and some have a good game, and some have a difficult game. So there's obviously that. You know, if I'm born in a country that's at war, you know, it doesn't really matter my color or my gender or any of that. I'm going to be born into a place of, you know, war. If I am born into poverty, uh, you know, millions of children, even in the U.S., you know, um, don't eat every day. Don't, I live in poverty and they might be born into that. So what I'm handed when I'm born is, is obviously going to be very different already just to start with. And then there is my capacity to, to play the game, to, to, to put, use my cards to the best of my ability. And very often, that's, I think, where the idea of community, uh, supporting community, can come into play. Because, yes, I might be born with not a good game, but I might have people playing with me that help me make the best out of it. And... I, when I feel that, then I connect like to obviously something that has been said, you know, in, in many spiritual um, traditions, which is I cannot be free until you are free. My freedom, in fact, is illusional because I live in relations. I, I can only be free once every being on this planet are free. And it might be hard to feel that if I am wounded because I'm already such in a state of alert and trauma that survival this very often disconnects you from the community because it's just about your life. You're in a, this corner, you know, but it's the goal, I feel. It's a goal, you know, it's like, can I, can I offer that? Can my freedom and my liberation also liberate others? Or does my freedom impact others to less freedom. My freedom to consume, you know, is this creating, you know, uh, slavery in Asia because people are making my stuff are basically underpaid. That's my freedom to, you know, uh, not care about 
what's happening in the collective? Is it impacting others that maybe don't have the same access, don't have good food, good health, and so they're more at risk than me, for example, during a pandemic? And I need always to ponder that. I always need to stay in relations to not just how free I am, but how free is the system and how I'm participating or not in it. You know, and as a privileged person, we need to ask ourselves that because even we more, have the tools more. and we have space to work on that and not just surviving, you know, not just yeah. daily survival. Uh, I understand you, you're basically talking about interdependence also. Yes. Consciousness yes. of interdependence and the yeah. responsibility of uh, using our freedom in a certain way or not. We have this, this, uh, this large way of uh, using our actions uh, on this world because, yeah, we, we, we can be more... Yeah, my, talking about me, my French side is maybe more privileged than my Madagascar side. So how can I deal with it in my daily life to to affect other people's freedom in a certain way and not eat their freedom because I want to enjoy my freedom. And it's really about this, uh, this proverb in French, and it's not just in French, ma liberté s'arrête là où commence celle des autres. How would you say this in French? My freedom starts... When, my freedom uh, my starts freedom where freedom. the freedom of others end. Yeah, so oh, oh, that's where we connect. Yeah, and actually, yeah, in French, we say my, my, my freedom stops where the other freedom starts, but I don't really like the stop and start because it's, it's, it's uh, overlaps. It's uh, not uh, start. And, there is no border between my freedom. Oh, I start. I, I will stop being free because you won't be. But it's not uh, limited. It's not that way. It's overlapping. It's, uh, there, is, there are threads and we build something together. Over, we overlap everything. I don't know what you think. It's very difficult to... To create yeah. this net of free, of and it's mainly, people. you know, it's mainly because we've lost our connections with each other. We forgot that we are in relationship. If you think of a forest and trees, we can always often look at the wilderness, you know, as this expression of freedom. Like, you know, the uh, the bear in the mountain is free, you know, but is he? Is she? Is she is in relation. She depends of the weather, of finding prey for eating, of finding cover and shelter in the winter. She, you know, rely on many other beings out there to experience her freedom. And her own freedom can never come at the cost of the freedom of others because then the system is going to eliminate that bear if she starts destroying cost. all the prey and there's nothing left to eat. Because she just say, well, I'm free to do whatever I want because I'm the most powerful animal right here and I don't have any predators. We can see that there's a limit to it. And nature does that very, very well. It's always in relations. Any tree in the forest, we can see, oh, it's very free. There's no restriction there, but it's in relations. It's in relations always. But we are, so, we are such in an individualistic society, you know, and... Not even culture, because I don't think, you know, Francis Weller that was on an interview with me a few days ago said, well, we don't have a culture because a culture requires a rite of passages and songs and poetry and creation stories. And he said, we, are, we are a society. We, we don't yeah, have society. that uniformity that a culture has. So in this society that we are living in, we are very individualistic. And because we learn that, we learn that at school. Well, by being graded between each other. Some are better, some are less than others. We learn that in our social classes and how we relate to each other. I learned that through money and the power I have over others. So we are deeply framed and colonized inside our bodies. And we have deeply colonized mind on the way we see each other. And that view of colonization in general, which has been going on for hundreds of years, is a view that is embedded into separation, into taking first and then maybe seeing what's left. Freedom, wilderness, nature doesn't work that way. It's always in relation. There's always a communication there. And maybe that's more freedom, but maybe also that means that I need to willingly accept that I will never be free because I'm part of a system 
that I Angel, rely that's on, why, you know? Because I, Angel, when you say, it, suddenly when you talk, it came to my mind, maybe it's not about freedom. It's just a, about relationship. Maybe we should give up a certain time. I love words, you know, you love, you know, I, you know my love for words. And I really think words are best tools for us to shift. And when you talked and you said freedom, freedom, and then you said relation, relation, I said, oh, maybe we should give up a little bit this freedom word to say f- relationship. And also when you talked about uh, we, we are free at the cost of, you know, at the cost of the other. I, ha- I really felt some people, some elements of the nature, nature has to pay for us to say, yeah, I'm free, I'm free, as if it was the best religion ever, to, to want to be free. Maybe we, just, we should just do this exercise of giving up, giving up this freedom world, which I love, I love at the beginning. When, but when I talk to you, suddenly I say, maybe I should just put it in a drawer for a while and just say, I want to be in a relationship. Relationship, yeah. how? <laughs> this is my ideal. And not thinking about free, 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 but relationship, relationship. They wouldn't, if I put myself in this uh, frame, this system of the relationship ideal instead of freedom ideal, I will not uh, make people pay for. for yeah, for not only, not, and it's not even I want to be in a relationship. It's that I want to remember that I am. Right, because exactly. we always exactly. are. We forgot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We forgot. We so forgot. it's like, I can't really say, oh, I should. No, I, I am. And yeah. We are experiencing Remember. it with, you know, with climate change, with the pandemic, with the collapse of our, you know, social systems, you know, health system and, and all of that. We can see that we're in a relationship and I can't even go, you know, at the middle of the wilderness and live in a hut, but I'm going to be dependent anyway of the system. So I can look at the great whales swimming in the oceans, the great eagles flying in the sky and see that as a symbol of the ultimate dream of freedom. But it's not what it is. They are in relation. No, no, they can not- only live through a system. Even the earth, the, the whole exactly. planet is but not the sun. free because, you know, in 4.5 billion years, the sun is going to explode and swallow this earth. You know, and bring it to annihilations. So is the earth even free? Even that solar system at some point is going to, you know, to collapse on itself. So it's always within a system. And I guess, you know, it brings the question of free will and God, the creator, whatever is yeah. moving is that. It written? Is it written? Yeah. All written Maybe that's the only level of full freedom, you know. Uh, if we see it as a as a god that you know decides things, and that's not how I see it, but maybe you know that notion of freedom, yeah, like you said, you know, is, is in those relations, but also in the movement. It is fluid. It is not a state that I am in. Exactly. It's alive. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. alive. Yeah, it's, you know, it's moving. It's moving. It's uh, and, and because it's all it's holistic. And to be free, if it exists, if it has, if it makes sense, because suddenly I'm thinking, does it make sense to, to speak about freedom? Maybe it's an illusion and we, we need to pass this. But yeah, the, the, uh, when you talked about the solar system, it's really a good way because, because, oh, the earth is free to turn around the sun. Like, you know, this freedom, this is freedom. But no, it's all, it's, there is a matrix and it's beautiful. And it works yeah. because it, well, for now we are not collapsing against uh, Venus or Mars for now. <laughs> because the and Earth she's not, say, she's not even free, free to, to free. she's not even free to turn around the sun. She's under the rule of gravity. Exactly. Gravity now is what makes her stay where she is. And she cannot go somewhere else. She cannot get closer. She just has to. And even the beautiful shape of this, you know, rotation around the sun every year is through outside forces, something bigger than her, something that's beyond her. And you can see that. You can look at me in my tiny, tiny life as a little ants on this planet, and then you can start zooming in the macrocosm, and you can see that every layer has an outer layer that is holding it, that is keeping it together, that is making it evolve, that is guiding it. And I think that's what I'm calling, you know, when I talk about mind freedom, you know, it's like, what are those other forces that are wiser because I've been here longer, because they go slower? What can they teach me? So I can embrace that 
and maybe my freedom is that embracing of my unknowingness, my not knowing, my little, little piece of life that is so quick on the scale of the earth, you know, and it's humbling. And I think any, you know, Native American, you know, they practice that a lot, but they say that anything that's humbling you is usually the highest wisdom. Anything that brings you on your knees is the highest freedom. It's not when you jump around and scream with your arms open, I'm free. No, it's maybe when you're down on your knees in the collapse of your own self that maybe there is a gateway into a different kind of freedom, a different kind of liberation. Different kind, different kind. Definitely, I feel that this is a different kind of freedom. It's way, far away from the old definition, the, the, the capitalistic definition. And I, when I listened to you, I really felt also the, this uh, being, being free is maybe being in harmony with the cosmos. And the cosmos has a rule. There are laws of the cosmos. And I didn't see the earth going on a protest against the sun or Venus or Mars saying, <laughs> give my turn, I want to turn faster, whatever. And no, nobody, you know, but we as, as free, free will person and we have the, the, the will. And what do we do with this will? And as you say, I, I like when you say the humbling because the, to, to, have the, to use this will to be humble it's like what, to use a will to be humble. Well, well, we have the will and there might be a battle sometime between our will, our cap capitalistic or Western will, and this humility that brings us back to earth. And humility comes from humus to be in, on earth and to, uh, to accept, to just uh, surrender to the fact that we, we are part of life and part of this uh, cosmos and part of these laws of natural laws. And yes, which means injury. really, when yeah. you really connect to that notion of interdependence and yeah. relations, like we witness sometimes easily in nature, which is quite mm -hmm. broken in our societies, um, there is that notion of service, something that's service. beyond me, something that I do that is not about me, that is about the greater collective, that is about, you know, maybe my children, the next seven generations, you know, something that goes beyond just my own life. And nature is really good at doing that. And we are it. We are part of it. You know, we have separated, but we're still part of it. So we carry those capacities to care. And therefore... I cannot really reflect and scream about voice on Facebook about my lack of freedom if I do not take a pause first and witness the collective, the suffering that is there, maybe the lack of freedom that is there, and then come from that voice, you know, and obviously... You know, if I have access to a computer, if I'm able to voice my opinion on Facebook, I'm probably pretty free compared to many people on this planet because I probably have money, I probably have a Just computer, <laughs> internet access, I probably have enough education to be able to write and read. So, you know, it, it's easy to, to see freedom just from our perspective. My grandfather probably would have had a very different opinion on that because he went to fight at 18 years old for World War II. So... He experienced, you know, Nazi Germany and he experienced the liberations, you know, of, of that. And so his experience of freedom, if he, when I was talking to him about it, he's like, you have an easy life. You have a yeah, lot yeah. of freedom. And he would probably laugh today that if I, if I consider that wearing a mask or not being able to travel for a certain amount of time is a restriction of my freedom. He would probably if say, well, you don't really then. know what restriction of freedom is about, yeah. you know. Because I'm privileged. How privileged it is that I could travel, you know, five times a year, you know, until last year. You know, many people have never traveled and will never take a plane in their whole life. So yeah. I always need to stay in touch with that, you know, because I think then it can inform what I'm saying in a much more caring way for the others. Like, be mindful to what I say, how it can be perceived from someone that's in the place of lack of freedom, uh, in the place of oppression, might perceive my words. Oh, this, this is just, you know, sometimes you read people say, oh, this is your reality because you created it. You know, oh, yeah, just, yeah, yeah, you yeah. can create another reality. Well, tell that to the person that jail, you know, in jail in an oppressive country yeah. uh, that is, you know, 
he manifested his own jailing because he was born in an oppressive system. You know, we have to be careful to, to, to really bring compassion in our words and, and very often just slow down a lot before we talk and we speak and we express it. Relax. And realize the amount of work then that I'm probably called to do. Like then if I see that, what am I going to do about it? Because I'm, that's my freedom. My freedom comes in my, act, in my choice of acting. I can decide to do what I want to do. I can tackle that issues or close my eyes. I can open my heart to others or close it. I can stay stuck in my privilege or try to decolonize my mind and my body during my whole life. Nice. So the choice. choice is there. It's what I'm, that we are free being, you know, in that aspect. I decide what am I going to do about it or not. Or not. There is freedom there in the next step I can take very conscious often. Conscious choice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah my it's conscious it's... choice. That's my freedom. Do I care? Do I don't care? Do maybe I thought I was caring and I realized I did not because I didn't know about certain issues. I didn't know about my privileged. I never experienced fear when I walk in the street because I'm white. So I will never walk in a black body. I never fully understand what it is to walk in a black body. But that should not prevent me to really sit with that and what it means maybe. And what can I do about it? Where do I perpetuate those systems of oppression that restrict freedom from others? What am I going to do about it? That excites exactly. me. That's where I like, I feel I have power, you know, maybe a and tiny, tiny free. power, but maybe you can do things a little bit differently next time. It's crazy how you realize that you are in this body, you are in this life, you have to deal with it, you do with what you do, and you constantly have the opportunity to confront the other and to try to put yourself in other people's shoes. And I think it's beautiful all the time to be so me, 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 and also to be invited to, 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 to yeah, to not identify to other people, but to understand them, understand them and try to create a harmony or a balance between all these situations, all these conditions. And obviously we don't want to to make everybody being a clone or having the same life so it's equal so you have the same amount of money the same house the same type of society so obviously we don't want to conf conform everything we love this diversity and everything and at the same time yeah there is like a paradox here but I, there is a paradox in this uh, yeah it is tricky is it is uh you know it is difficult to explore that theme especially because we are in a society of me 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 Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. that's, that's literally line. what we've been raised in, what's around me. And it doesn't matter if you're in a spiritual community or not. It's everywhere. And I need to be conscious of that, you know, and really where am I going to dedicate my energies on my days? And is that, is that for something that may be open to different type of relations, different type of relations with each other's, different type of communities. <laughs> yeah, different type of connection to this planet that is alive. Um, you know, so that's where, yeah, my free choice is, is really important. And the society, you know, very often is inviting us to close our eyes to that. Like, or we might be even feel so overwhelmed because it looks like the problem is so big. Yeah. You know, and so out of reach to my little life that I can do nothing about it. And that's also something we learned. We learned that we don't have power because our power was taken oh, away. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah, know, exactly. by that's our good, education system, by so many things. So it's a difficult process to remember, yeah, this longing for a freedom that is maybe very different than the one I've learned, the what I think it should look like, that is really, really in relations, that is really in giving and service. And that really is in humbling to something much bigger, you know, so I can maybe hear the wisdom of those trees, of this planet, that is trying to pierce here and I can hear those voices and then infuse my actions from that place. So it's not about me anymore. 
It's about the collective. How beautiful, you know, if we were, if even I was able to do that all the time, you know, but oh I God, need to I'm... keep that question running, you know, always yeah, yeah, and yeah. say, well, why am I doing this? Yeah, exactly. To have all these, uh, to have this, uh, comment dire, exigence, je sais pas comment on dit, this um, ambition in your, in, your, in your mind every time, every, even, even if we, we, we can feel the ego or the me, me, me coming back sometimes. But as you say, for me, is a, uh, I mean, you didn't say, but I, I felt, I heard this word, like it's almost like a re-education. We need to re-educate ourselves to this way of feeling of the way of being free and yeah, re-education or um, changing the, 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 the yeah, education system. For me, really, also you talked about a lot of about school education. Oh, it's so dark here. And uh, to me, it's, okay, it's um, one of the possibility to cultivate this this uh, inner free will of course it's an inner work spiritual work and i can i cannot help to think about this the education system to be totally yes. rebuilt for to, to totally destroyed and and starts from scratch with another view because we now it's just uh, it doesn't it doesn't doesn't work because we're per per perpetuating this view, this is a wrong view. We didn't go in the right direction for now. And we need to um, definitely work on the spiritual way as adults. But for kids, I think about the kids now. I think about their definition, about their way to feel free. And I, I hope that in this terrible pandemic situation, maybe the kids that are in school and still taught to be the first one, to have the best grade, to be the first, to be the first, they will realize, oh, oh it doesn't matter. There's something wrong. Okay, it's good to be the first. Uh, it's, it's good to be proud of your grade. But definitely this world now, we're going to switch. And maybe as adults, they will create something new. When we talk about the relation, that, that's the only thing left that they have to be with people, to be, uh, to be to, because I see some people, some students in school, they are depressed, obviously. They are depressed in mm -hmm. front of their Zoom class. Something is dying inside of them. They will, be, they will create another world, I hope. But that's very sad that they will create maybe another world from this, this difficulty, not because we as adults built the right school for them to evolve in a nice way and to learn and, and enjoy this relationship with the nature and this relationship with others. Well, so yeah, I mean, we, you know, watch this documentary that I sent you on school system and definitely the system is not designed to produce healthy mentally, emotionally, bodily adults, it's designed to produce workers for the system. People that will fit in the boxes of the system so they can produce for the system. And in exchange, maybe receive some kind of compensation. So we are taking away spontaneity, dreams, the magic, the magic that flows in children. The children are so capable of seeing a very different world. So we're taking that away by telling them it has no value. This is just dreams. This is just you're getting lost into a fantasy world. And we're forcing them into a box that's basically the beginning of their restriction of freedoms. We're selling it as this is more freedom because you can get yeah, bigger yeah. diplomas, you're going to get more money, you're going to get a bigger job. So it is you sold as want. an invitation to more freedom. What in fact, <laughs> what it's doing is going to take your freedom away, your capacity to think, your capacity to really be autonomous in your decisions, not based on the system, but based on what you really feel in your heart. And then at the same time, it's putting in your brain all the traumas and the ideas of colonization and, and a certain Western way of thinking Domination. that has created yeah. so much damage on nature, on each other's, yeah. you know. We, we know already, we know already. So that's why I, we all know that. So why we, I hope, I know that there are so many new alternative schools and new way of the pedagogy. It's, it's evolving, but I would like to be, I would like it to be faster that, but at the same time, the ed some education system are nourishing this this world that we don't want to leave because it was so comfortable and it's hard to break free uh, from this whole uh, civilization that we built. So yeah, I mean the system will resist in the same way that our ego and our mind resist change. It's just a reflection of it. 
you know, the way of the heart is a bit more silent sometimes. It can take a long time before we hear it, before we respond to it. Oh, yeah. And yeah. might take us on our knees for us to really make great changes. And I see that as the exact same process on the collective. The collective yeah. will only make those changes until everybody's on their knees and everybody realizes oh. that the system is there. So that inner process is reflected in our institutions, in our education system, in our economical system, you know, in the way we run countries, we make laws and all of that. You can see it everywhere. It's trying to survive knowing it is dying, knowing it is not the answer. Uh, so there's great forces, you know, on both sides that are at work and are both needed. I believe that collapse is needed to really realize, you know, what's not the working. Next like you need to yeah, fall yeah. on your knees to really realize, yeah, oh my God, on, I need needs. to get out of this. I need to change something in my life. Yeah, I, I really like your, when you said this image, the, to be on your knees and that everyone be, we need everyone to be on their knees because there were already so many people on their knees. But we didn't see it because we were like doing that. But now, even the other supposedly superior, or supposedly privileged, they're getting on their knees and like, no, I want to be free. But it's not a question. <laughs> fall on your knees. You're going to fall. We're all going to fall. And we're going to have the opportunity to be reborn after that. But that's, that's a pity that we have to reach this point. But there were so many yes. people reaching before us or before us, what it is us. But definitely, I feel, I feel what, you, what you're saying. And, and it's a very, well, you know, there's something in, in shamanic world or in a, in, a, in a spiritual world, you know, this, this is an invitation to the descent, which is a feminine archetype. I'm descending into the earth. I'm, I'm getting my knees on the earth. It's very feminine. And our system, as we know, is about growth, rising. <laughs> Ascension, more money, you know, taller and taller buildings, you know, just a f stock market going up. It's a very masculine archetype, that, that rising. And so you can see that even that colonized mind has invaded the spiritual community that just want to ascend or transcend. Yeah, yeah. Ascension, Nobody yeah, yeah. wants Ascension, to descend. Ascension. You know, it's very rare that people say the way is the descent. The way is down, down, down. And then maybe when I completely collapse there, when I've, met, when I've met the darkest part of my soul, the darkest shadows, maybe that's where God is. Maybe that's where the transformation is. But you can see that these 5D things, you know, people say, oh, let's go 5D or 7D. That's technology world that has invaded spirituality. Those technological terms. You can see how it has colonized oh, yeah. even that, you know. Yeah, yeah. And the earth is here in 3D, perfectly alive and waiting for us to come down on our knees on this land where we are to feel the traumas of the First, Na First Nation people that have died on this land that I'm on, to feel, you know, what's really happening here. And she kind of got us, you know, made more of us on our knees. And maybe, you know, we fell on our knees because we're really upset we can travel or we have to wear a mask or whatever it is. It doesn't really matter how you're going to get there. But as long as you resist the bigger message there, which is about really looking at how we are in relations, we might resist it for a longer time. And we might use either our money to escape it or even our spiritual ways to escape it. It doesn't matter. Ah, um, whatever I'm going to prevent, to feel the pain, to exactly. feel the grief, yeah, the sorrow. Avoid. Yeah, because it's, it's hard to go for this, this uh, okay, go, go there, go there, but I'm scared, I'm scared. When I, I also listen to you, I think about this parable, I, I forgot exactly which, which one it is, but in the Bible it says, go empty, empty yeah. yourself, you, you empty yourself, go empty, get empty, and then something else will happen. But it's opposite now, uh, full up your fridge, full up your bank account, full up, well, doing, doing exactly the opposite, but going empty is going, it's exactly like you say, humbling, going to the earth, like on your knees. You know, I had this image when I listened to what you just said, um, 
about going on your knees and to the earth. I love to sleep on the floor. And some people say, well, on the floor, it's hard, it's dark, it's painful. You have, a, you have a bed. They say, I know I have a bed, but <laughs> I actually like to be on the floor, you know, and even in the garden, in the, in the yard, to be on the, and I actually sleep very good. And why is it this idea that you need a, like a heavy, like fit mattress? Okay, it's maybe hard at some point, but I feel the earth. I just go, I feel the earth. I feel alive. And uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't mean that I want simplicity, no bed, no fridge, no kitchen. I'm not going anti-consumerism, but some, when I do that, being on the floor with no blanket and everything, I, I, I'm doing like this exercise of going empty. Like the mm. simplicity, is, um, this humility, because humility comes from humus, which is the humus is the soil. <laughs> when we say humus, which is, you know, going to the earth. It's interesting because it made me think when you go to more traditional societies, they don't build a floor in the house. They build walls and a roof. But the bare floor, the bare land is always present. Either you go in the Amazon or, you know, I was in Nepal for a long time. You go in those beautiful houses, but the ground floor is the soil. There's soil. not like a, a wood floor or concrete or anything. So it's interesting because those cultures obviously are much more connected to the land continue, and they've somehow continue. learned that they need to stay in direct contact with the mother, with the earth. Yeah. They need to and remember home, home. that yeah. we're connected to her and we depend on her. So that's, uh, I've never thought of that. So yeah, that's, that's a beautiful way of looking at it. I like that. Yeah, you're not cut, you come home at home inside, but you're still connected to the earth. Same thing in Madagascar in the, the traditional house. Obviously it's the red, the red soil and outside, inside, same. <laughs> Yeah. Ah, Guillaume, it's wow, beautiful. I it makes me think. Oh, well, my, my my brain is boiling now. <laughs> my brain is boiling. I told I you see... it's a weak conversation, at least. <laughs> yeah, it's a weak conversation. There's a yeah, book. Definitely. There's a book right there. <laughs> there is a book. There is a big book, a thick one, thick one, and and, uh, and now okay, we pa we pa we actually passed the forty-five minutes. We, we, we end up, ended up with the, the earth inside the home. Let's break down the, the carpet and let's go back to mm. the, the original. And it's interesting that she's calling us at the end because I think she's reminding us that at the end of the day, that's where we're going. So however free we are in this life, at the end of the day, we're going to end up into the ground, buried, buried under minute. it. <laughs> and we are going to be in relations because all those little worms and bacteria and animals that live there are going to make their way into it. And my bones are going to become, you know, minerals that will be stoned one day or in the tears of an animal. So that's wow. where it's going anyway. So am I really free there? You know, I'm not. But what am I going to do when I'm alive? What am I going to do to really experience this life in a beautiful way you know that is deeply caring and loving for myself and for others at the same time so we're back to the earth you know we can't escape it she just reminded us of that there's no escape she just <laughs> she's told, laughing at our she freedom as we dancing on the ground <laughs> oh yeah yeah Wow, thank you very much thank you very much angel for this uh, dialogue with you and this travel and this travel back back home yeah thank you so much it was such a pleasure i had so much joy exchanging on the subject and it was good to connect to you sister uh, much love to you and to your loved ones love over there you. in france yeah yeah thank you for watching this dialogue and you can share it with your friends and your loved ones and yes let's keep going let's keep dialoguing amen thank you very much <laughs> thank you <laughs> Bye. Au revoir. Bye.